welcome to uh, Frankert channel, Frankert uh, Auto channel. Thank you for all your support. Today I'm going to try to talk about oxyacetylene. So oxyacetylene tank. Uh, I'm going to talk about the safety procedure and some information of oxyacetylene. Uh, this video is mostly intended for my classrooms, my students. If you want to use it, that's your choice. Okay, we're going to start off with the parts. So we have oxygen tank, acetylene tank. We have the valves. This is the called a tank valve on oxygen. This is called uh, acetylene valve or the tank valve. They're called actually smart valve. Most of the tanks are coming out with the smart valve. So you don't have to open it. It's just a flick. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, we have our regulator. Regulator. So the function of the regulator is to regulate the pressure that you're working with. So the tank pressure is different than the pressure that you work with. We have the gauges. The gauge that's closer to the tank, here and here, they show you what the pressure is inside the tank. The gauge that's closer to the hose or the line, it shows you the pressure that you work with. Okay, so this is called a torch. That's the pressure that you will work with. This is called torch. We have the two uh, the valves for the torch. Okay, um, I'm going to quickly show you the new uh, the valves. So these are called smart valves. So we got one here, one here. So these ones are easy. You just flick these, and they open. Okay? The procedure for the the old style valves that's different. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Okay. So let's talk about oxygen. Oxygen is stored in the tank at about 2,000 psi. That's a very high pressure uh, for the oxygen to be stored in the tank. Uh, the valve here, it's called a double seated valve. So if you have a valve like this, you have to open this all the way. You can't just leave it halfway because if you leave it halfway sometimes, it, because it's such a high pressure, it starts leaking from here. All the hoses are green in color. Okay, so. 2,000 PSI, hoses are green in color. Uh, you don't want to lay this tank down because if you lay this tank down and in case this valve breaks, this becomes a torpedo. This becomes a rocket and it'll go through center block walls. Okay, you need to be careful that you never ever use any kind of lubricant, any WD-40s, any oil, any of that on the oxygen tank because if um, because it can, that's pure oxygen, you gotta remember that, and you add oil to it, it becomes fuel. And that can catch fire spontaneously. Okay. Now the acetylene, acetylene is stored in the tank at 250 PSI. All the acetylene, the line is red in color, that's how you recognize. All the fittings on acetylene, they're left hand thread. So fittings here, they're all left-hand thread, and you can re recognize that by grooves on them. So these are tiny grooves here. Every fitting will have that groove on acetylene. Um, acetylene is spontaneously uh, combustible in air at pressures above 15 psi. Okay, uh, acetylene tank has two fusible plugs. There's one on the top, one on the bottom. The function of that fusible plug is it will melt if the temperature goes above 200 and 212 degree Fahrenheit or if the pressure goes above 500 PSI. One more thing about acetylene. Um, you don't want to ever lay this down. You should have it upright at least two hours before you start welding, minimum two hours. And the reason for that is if you lay this down, what happens is there is honeycomb inside. Um, and the honeycomb is filled with gas called acetone. If you lay it down and start welding, the acetone burns out. It comes out through the, through the valves, it comes out through the torch hand, and it burns. And now you have acetylene that's unstable in here. You have to remember that both tanks, they must be chained up and upright when you're welding. Uh, once you have all the fittings attached, you got the hoses attached, this is obviously you're just going to do it once when you just replace the tank. Uh, you want to open the tank and you want to use soapy water, spray it, and make sure there are no leaks. Okay. All our tanks, they have uh, one-way check valves, basically flame arrest valves. There's one here, one here, and then we have it on the torches as well, there and there. The function of this is, let's say that you're welding and for some reason the hose gets uh, catches on fire. 
What's going to happen is the flame is going to start traveling and the flame is going to try to get into the tank. What these check valves or flame arrest valves, what they do is they prevent the gases or anything going back into the tank. It will allow it stuff or the gas basically to go this way, nothing can go back in. Okay, so now we're going to do the setup, the procedure, how to start oxyacetylene welding. When you're opening the tank valve on oxygen, you have to make sure a couple of things. First, make sure this regulator valve is all the way back. And the reason for that is, if this was pressurized, if this regulator valve was in, you open the tank, all of a sudden you got 2,000 pounds uh, PSI coming out, and if there's something wrong with the threads, this valve is gonna go flying out. 2,000 pounds is a lot of pressure. So you wanna make sure that this regulator valve is backed off. Don't be standing in front of it, even if it's backed off, you know it's backed off, don't stand in front of the valve. Open the tank valve, if it's this kind of valve, open it all the way. So the oxygen valve, the tank valve opens all the way. As soon as that opens, it shows you the pressure in the tank on this gauge. Okay, for the acetylene, same deal, make sure the regular valve is backed up. This is not so dangerous because it's only stored at 200, 250 PSI. Uh, so if you have a smart valve, all you're doing is you're flicking the smart valve up. That's all you're doing. So I'll turn this around so you can see what it is. Okay, so all you're doing is flicking this up. If you had old style, depending on where you are, if you have an old style turn valve on the tank, you do not, it's very important that you do not turn a settling tank valve more than one turn. And the reason for that is if in case of fire or emergency, you should, should be able to turn that off very quick. Okay, so now we're gonna start setting up the, the working pressure. Working pressure is what you have in your hand, in the torch, okay? So the way you set that is you turn the regulator valve, so here's our tank pressure. So you turn the regulator valve clockwise and the hand pressure will start going up. So it jumped quite a bit higher than what I wanted. It should be about five PSI. So to lower it, what you need to do is you need to release it from the, from the torch. Okay, so you open the torch valve and you turn it counterclockwise and get it to the desired pressure, which is 5 PSI. So our working pressure for oxygen is set. To set uh, acetylene, same thing, 5 oxygen, 5 acetylene. So you turn the, the, the butterfly valve on the regulator, turn it, so it jumped over 5. The only way to bring that down is you have to open up the acetylene on the torch. You open that up, you move it counterclockwise, until you read five. Our equipment is not brand new, so it's a bit jittery. Okay, so that's five. Another thing you need to remember is, when you're welding, the tank pressure can go down. The tank pressure can go down. As the tank pressure goes down, your, your working pressure doesn't go down because that's controlled by the regulator. Unless it goes below five PSI, I guess, then it will start changing. So if your tank pressure drops from, let's say, this one is at uh, 100 PSI, it drops from 100 PSI to 40 PSI, the, your working pressure is not going to change. It will only change if it, the tank pressure drops below five PSI. Okay, so a couple of the things you need to remember when you start welding, try not to, or well, you shouldn't weld anything that's held to a flammable substance, like a propane tank, like a gas tank. There is a separate procedure how you you need to weld, but for my classroom, please don't weld anything that's held flammable substance. Um, you're, when you're welding galvanized material, you're brazing, pretty well any type of welding that you're doing with oxyacetylene, you want to be in an area that's well ventilated. Um, we have vacuum in our uh, shop, but if you are doing this at home or somewhere, make sure you're not in a confined area, you have well ventilated area. So some of the safety equipment that you need, you need gauntlet um, leather gloves basically that will protect your arms and your hands. You need uh, high leather shoes. Uh, you need number four uh, lens safety uh, glasses, basically welding glasses. You can't just wear safety glasses because this will 
prevent heat, spark, and the brightness. So you can't just wear regular safety glasses. You have to have welding glasses with number four lens. Okay, so we're ready to light. Uh, another thing about safety is you never want to keep any type of lighter, especially the disposable lighters, the any plastic lighters in your pocket because when you're welding, sparks are going to fly. And if any spark happens to land on your lighter, you can imagine what's going to happen. So you spark, you always use a striker. This is called a striker. And the way the striker works is you just, it's a, it's a flint in it. So you push down and in and it gives you sparks. Um, you never want to hold the, the striker like this because if you see the shape of the striker, it's like a cup. So if I hold it here, the gases are going to go in and they're going to come back at my face. And if I strike it, the gases are going to burn and it's going to burn some of my facial hair too with it because the gas is going to go in and it's going to shoot back at my face. When you're ready to light the, the torch, make sure your, the torch is not facing the tank, the hoses, your friends, especially yourself. You don't want it this facing anywhere, you want it towards the ground. Uh, you also want to make sure that the hose is not dangling on the floor because as I said, the sparks are going to fly, the molten metal is going to be all over the floor and you don't want that going to the hose and start burning the hose. Okay, so we're ready to light it, my torch is towards the floor, it's not facing anyone. You want to hold the striker like such, not like that, remember what I said about flame coming back at you. Okay. And the first gas that you burn with, uh, the, sorry, the first gas that you use or you open or you purge with is acetylene. Okay, so you open acetylene, you're opening the torch valve, you open it about quarter and you strike. Okay, once you strike, you have a flame, there's going to be a lot of smoke coming off. You want to go to a flame where it becomes feathered. Okay, if it's too much, what's going to happen is the flame is going to, it's going to break at the torch. You don't want that. You want it just no, not too much hissing. So go from the smoked flame to a feathered flame. So that is the flame that we are going to start working with. Now we're going to start adding oxygen to it. Start slowly opening the oxygen on the torch valve right here. I'm opening the oxygen and you will start seeing the color change. And that is, uh, now we have oxygen added to it. This is called carburizing flame. The carburizing flame, it has too much acetylene. This is not what you weld with. Okay, at this time, as I said, like this is carburizing flame. At this time, you should see three different flames. There's one big flame, then the, the, there's another flame in the middle, right, right here somewhere, and then the third one is at the bottom. I'm just trying to touch it. I'm, you might not see this, but the third flame is a small one right at the tip. You keep adding more and more oxygen to it, until you get a welding, the flame that you weld with, it's called a neutral, like a car goes in neutral, it's called a neutral flame. So I'm adding more and more oxygen. So there you can see the flames coming together. As soon as you get the second and the third flame right there, that is called a neutral flame. That's what you weld with, okay? If you, sorry. So if you happen to add too much oxygen, so that's our neutral flame, if you happen to add too much oxygen, it, it will actually start cutting, it'll start putting holes in it. That is called oxidizing uh, flame. So that will sound, it'll be hissing. And the, the tip will get very sharp. So I'm gonna try adding more oxygen to it. Okay, so you can hear it's hissing quite a bit. That's not the flame that you wanna weld with. Okay, so you go back until you get your neutral flames. From three flames, you go down to two flames. That is what you weld with. Okay. Now we're ready to shut down the, the oxyacetylene torch. So the first one, because acetylene is the one that burns, oxygen just aids into it. So we turn the acetylene torch first. So we turn the acetylene first, turn off the oxygen. We go to the tanks. We turn off the acetylene tank first. We turn off the oxygen tank. Okay. Now we have to release everything that's in the lines. So we release the acetylene first until our gauges drop to zero. We back off the regular valve. We close 
the handle valve, same deal for oxygen. We open oxygen until both valves drop to zero. We back off the regulator valve and we close the, the, the torch valve. Wrap the hose and we are done. Um, the temperature of this flame that you saw, um, it's about 2800 degrees Celsius to 3500 degrees Celsius. That's very hot. So if it can melt the metal, you can imagine what it'll do to your skin. So please be careful with it. Uh, when you're welding on the table, you have to be careful that there are other things than the piece that you're welding. There's uh, going to be pliers going to be sitting there. There are going to be some other tools. There's going to be a striker. So watch what's sitting on the table when you weld. Okay.